evening, good morning, good night. I don't know what time you're watching this. You could be watching this in the morning. You could be watching the evening. You could be watching it in the daytime. You could be even making love to your partner and watching this. We love it. We don't mind. Welcome to Part Chat TV. I am your host, Ronnie Music. Today on the show, we've got a gentleman by the name of John, and he's giving me a second name. I should know it, but you know what? I'll let him introduce himself very, very soon. He is the CEO of the Chigali Fashion Week International, or Chigali International Fashion Week. Well, Chigali Fashion Week International. They've, they've been going for a while. Well, he's going to introduce and tell us how long it's been going. For those that don't know what Chigali Fashion Week International is, here's a little snippet of what's been happening lately, and we shall see you shortly. I'm out of I'm out to solid. I'm out to solid. And welcome to our channel, yes. TV. Thank you very much, sir. Um, now, before we go any further, please explain to our viewers what Chigali International Fashion Week is. Well, Kigali International Fashion Week is a, is a, is a fashion platform that promotes uh, mainly African designers from the whole of Africa. Uh, but we co cooperate with the international designers. Uh, like recently, we've uh, done the whole we've done the European tour. Uh, we're doing New York uh, soon, May, and you know, in September, we're doing uh, Japan in August, uh, Japan, Thailand, and Singapore. Uh, but we just promote Africa. We now we're creating a, a musical, which is the equivalent of the Lion King. It's a South African, but we, we create that, which are, we're going to go on the Broadway in New York and uh, Thailand, uh, Japan. So basically, we, we, I just said to open up something up that can promote the African interest. So we can compete in the international uh, market with, with other designers. Um, as you're aware, that uh, Don, uh, Julian McDonald, who is a British, one of the renowned British designers, is coming to Kigali for Kigali International Fashion Week. We had. Uh, uh, was, uh, uh, Vivian Westwood coming as well last time to promote, and uh, we, we watched some uh, international run British designers and American designers. So that's why it introduced the uh, Chigali International Fashion Week. When did it start, and how did you get started? How did you get it started? Uh, we started in uh, 2011. Uh, I, I was living in New York uh, before I moved here, and uh, from uh, I, I learned so many things. I worked with the New York Fashion Week in the PR department. And apart from that, I have a, a daughter who adopted my sister who passed away, got a daughter that I adopted. Now she's about 19. She's a, pro, she's a beautiful girl and uh, she got into fashion and I decided to promote her. She's in New York. Uh, that put me into the system. I said, well, okay, if I can do it to my daughter, and uh, it's my sister's daughter, of course, who passed away. I said, let me do it for other young girls in Africa who have, don't have parents, who don't have uh, who have siblings that are struggling, so I decided to promote that and uh, get models and designers, put them in the national market, uh, mainly North America and Europe. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, we say it's a good thing doing something for somebody. Um, you're saying you started in New York, yeah. and your inspiration was the was your daughter. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, from when you started in New York, how far has it gone now? Um, well, I would say that I've been in this industry for about 20 years because uh, when I said work with the, common, uh, with the, with the uh, New York uh, PR department um, way back and then I moved to the Commonwealth in London here, which I did, uh, did part of the African, I was working with the African department in the PR department, of course, and promoting African interests, mainly fashion, music, and drama, and all this kind of thing. So all this gave me the morale and uh, that, that zeal to go and do something in Africa. And uh, I mean, of course, I was out of Africa for 35 years. That shows how young I am. I'm only 18 for now, <laughs> but uh, <you> know, <laughs> I'm only 19 now. Yeah. So these, all these things I went through, uh, working with different uh, people and uh, different organizations, like the Commonwealth and the New York Fashion Week, it gave me the zeal. So I started doing that in Africa. We started with Kigali, then I moved to Bujumbu, Burundi. We opened something there. We went to Nairobi, opened the same thing. We went to Kampala, opened the same thing. We went to Ethiopia. And then I said, okay, that's not enough, but we need to go bigger. So we moved to Europe. So we moved to Switzerland, we moved to Holland and Belgium and Germany. 
And now I said, okay, and London, of course. London was our first. We launched it here in London. Now we're moving to New York and uh, Montreal. So we want to do North America. Uh, that's our main focus now for this year, and Japan. But Japan in combination with Thailand and Singapore. Okay. Yeah. And all in the name of promoting African creativity mm -hmm. and African fashion. Yeah. I mean, that's what I was going to come along uh, to ask you. Um, how do you find the... Does, how do you find the fashion industry in East Africa? Uh, is, you know, is it, are people embracing it? You know, do people look at this and go, you know what, this is what we want to do? Do you have a lot of interest? Do you have a lot of um, investors? First, we'll just go for how, how, how are people embracing fashion? You know, um, when we started uh, uh, 10, 11 years ago, um, there, was a, there was a bit of fashion, but people were seeing it as an entertainment. You know, we didn't have this... Africans, we didn't have this zeal of saying of looking at fashion as a, as a career that you can make money out of it. Whereas when you look at the Western world, it's a billion dollar industry. Yeah, you, you know, New York, London Fashion Week, they make lots of money out of it, and the, the city makes a lot of money out of it. But we didn't have that. Of course, this, our parents in Africa, they think if a child goes into fashion, is 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 a dropout and is a failure in life. You know, all these things. So we had to fight this. You know, this norm of failure and not being success, successful thing, uh, the mindset, we had to change that. Of course, it was very difficult, yes, but we managed, and we're still growing because it's still, it's still, we're still young. We, know we cannot compete ourselves. We cannot compete with the international market, the Europe and uh, North America or Asia. But what we decided is to, be, to go beyond borders. Uh, apart from being in Africa, we go to other countries, and we're, now we're partner with South Africa. South Africa is a very big market. Nigeria is a very big market. So we're trying to build ourselves going, going through Africa to Europe than how we used to do before, going from Europe, going to Africa. We have to build from Africa going out. Yeah, but then Some, somebody will come and say, um, you are going out of Africa since Africa is still emerging and it's, it's becoming, uh, it's, it's, still, it's still quite young. Why can't you remain in Africa? Rather than going out of it, why can't you res remain there? So, so you, people might people out there might go, oh, do you know what this? You know, you are taking the talent away from Africa. You're taking this. So why can't you? Why do you have? Why do you feel you need? You have the need to get away from Africa? You know, as I said, I've, uh, I spent 35 years in, in North America and Europe, and for me to go back to Africa with these skills and knowledge that I learned in these countries, it helped me to to know how we can outsource and, uh, and, and use our, our, our synergy to get that information out to promote our people, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely, we, we, we can keep Africa in the closet, but we could never move from that point. We've always been a small box. So the only way for us to develop is to come out, mm -hmm. come to Europe, go to North America, go to Asia, learn, because by going out, by traveling, you will learn a lot. And these designers and models, they need to learn and they need to connect and need to network with other people so they can develop their skills. That's what I believe in. Otherwise, if we keep to Africa, we keep Rwanda, Uganda, you know, we always remain what we are. We would never move forward. We have to compete. It's a global world. It's a global village now, the world we're living in. So we need to make these things happen. Okay. I hope it makes sense. Yeah, that's, um, that makes sense. Um, all right, in terms of um, uh, back to the designers from uh, Africa, because um, uh, we obviously you're trying to promote African designers. Mm. Um, how are you finding the designers themselves? Are they providing something that could be bought by the, by the outside market? What I mean by that is Europe, Asia, North America, South America, you name it. Are they, are they, providing, uh, are they providing the materials? Are they providing the goods? Are they providing the substance? So people can look and say, you know what, I can have that. Um, yes and no. Um, one thing I mentioned to mention that um, we, Africa, we don't have our own material, as in terms of clothes. All these clothes that we, we, we make designs out is all go from either China or Europe or in America. So we still have a long way to go. However, the designs that are being created by Africans are, 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 are reaching the point that they're competing with the international market. Uh, recently, I think last year, Stella McCartney, here in Britain, she had a, uh, in London Fashion Week, she had a show with African Kitenji. I don't know whether you saw that. And it was exactly similar to what Africans do. And one dress was costing 3,000 US dollars, mm -hmm. no, 3,000 pounds, actually. I said, wow, look at this, you know? So Africa now is coming to mainstream. The designs are there, 
Um, we, when, we, when we did the shows in, uh, in Amsterdam, we opened up a shop there with some uh, Dutch people who have a shop, were selling African stuff. They loved the shows, that we, the, the clothes that were brought in. The same to Brussels, we did the same. So we want to open up. We, we have to start from somewhere. Opening up one shop, two shops from each country to go, that's what builds up the, the morale and uh, the interest, people to start buying and know because we've always had our, 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 our creativity hidden back in, uh, in Africa, and most people don't know much about it. They always say the dark continent, Africa's got the dark continent, they have the clothes, but they, no one knows about yeah, it. But, yeah, but I, I, think, I think that myth now is being, being broken. Yeah, I, I don't think people look at Africa as a dark continent anymore. Not, but of course, some yeah. people, some people do. Especially, in the, you know, you're in the fashion industry. You know that there's too much. It's very beachy industry. Yeah, and people look down upon so many. And I don't want to mention this, but you know what it is. There's a lot of fight, black. Uh, and I mean, I was, I was gonna come down to the next step. The next step, which would be um, the, say, for instance, the modeling industry, because um, fashion goes with modeling, True. and as Africans, we, you know. Uh, I, as a CEO, just mixed two of us, uh, the person who does um, Power Chat Fashion Hub, for instance, we don't have a limit or a discrimination in terms of uh, women's bodies. In the, f in the fashion industry, especially the high end, you know, they've got this thing of a woman's going to have this look and they're going to have that look. So then it then discounts a lot of black women, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, because, well, fashion, and a lot of fashion is geared to women. I mean, you've got men doing it, but then, but the supermodels, you know, are mainly women. Um, so so the the clothings, the, the shape of the, of, of the black woman, she has to go to almost extreme lengths to get that European look type body. Now, how are you finding that Africans are somehow following this trend where they're like, the, the models have to look a certain way, fit a certain way to wear their clothes, to appeal to the European market? Um, the answer is no. Um, we as Africans, we've created our own kind of uh, uh, blueprint of how we want the models to be. We don't, we, we, we're trying not to look at the European way of modeling. Because Africans have a different type of bodies, you know, our bodies, uh, women are more pronounced and uh, all that. So we we put that in consideration that we don't want to make clothes that are for Africans for Europeans because we, we our bodies are different. Even the designers know that they make clothes for the Africans who are there because you have to start by your own before even you go out and sell to your own people. Yeah, no, no. But what I mean is the mod is the modeling industry I'm talking the about industry, here, yeah. not the everyday person who's going to come and buy your outfits. Yes, right. It's the more, cause, uh, what I have noticed personally is we, the, the guys who uh, maybe have, have had some sort of success are trying to emulate or they're trying to copy the European way, especially when it comes to women. And I feel like the, our women are, they have a different type of shape of body. I mean, not all of them, but a good amount. And so, but then to appeal, so you want to get, say for instance, you've got your models, you want to take them to Japan or New York or whatever. So they've got, a, they've now got to appeal to a certain look and look a certain way. So there might be a black female, but with a white female type. I don't know if that makes sense. No, I, I, get, your, I get your point. Yes, um, um, I have to agree that uh, like the models I'm taking to Japan, they're really having this European kind of look because that's what sells internationally. But when I'm in Africa, we use models that will suit our market because you know, the buyers we have in Africa are Africans. Some Europeans, but mainly it's African. It's, it's, mainly the market is uh, situated with Africans. So we try to balance this. When in Europe, there's a saying even in the Bible, when you go to Rome, you do what the Romans do. We bring them to Europe, then they have to go by the rules in Europe, how the models should look. Now, if you're in Africa, then the models have to look the African way. That's, 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 that's what I was trying to explain, Ariel. Does it make sense? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on the borderline with that one. Um, we'll now go back to designers. Um, you've got your fashion week coming up yes, in sir. Chigali, where Parcha Fashion House is going, to be t is going to be taking part. We thank you for giving us the opportunity. Pleasure now, hosting you too. Yeah, um, so for the designers, People who are watching right now, you've got some designers who are like, okay, we are coming to participate. What do you have in store for them? What are you offering, what are you offering them? Um, 
You know, usually when we have these shows, uh, like especially this year, we're going to have, uh, we have all these series of different shows taking place of different months, Kigali, then Japan, and so on. But what we have in this year's June show is having all these, some buyers coming from Japan, from Asia, coming to the show. Because we're going to have a show that they want to come and meet the designers. They want to come and see the Africa. Some of them is going to be their first time to come to Africa. So they want to see the creative industry in Africa. I think this is a very big uh, step forward for us because we've, uh, in the past we've never had most, uh, most of our guests coming from Asia. So it's going to be our first time. We always have Europe and North America, but Asia, the first time. And we have buyers. Uh, we have exhibition, so people can have, a, the designer can have exhibition and showcase what they have and, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's going to be different, I guarantee that. I don't want to reveal much because I'm, I'm, now I'm here, when I go back, then I can tell you more of what, what we're going to have because it's all in the process, it's a working process. Working, work, work in progress, right? Yeah, that's the thing, right? <laughs> work in progress, Chigali uh, Fashion Week. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's running for, is it four days, if I'm not mistaken? It's going to be four days. In terms of designers, what kind of outfits are you looking for? Is there is there a particular look you're looking for? Is that you're looking for glamour? Are you looking for sexy? Are you looking for what look is it? Or it just it's up to the designers what they come with. I think it's a general thing because um, it would be not fair for us to ask designers to to create a certain kind of because it's it's a growing industry. You know, so we, we theme, is there theme wise or no, we don't have any theme in Kigali. We don't have any theme. It's better to have to accommodate everyone. Because you might give a theme and some people don't have enough finance to do to create that. You know, mm -hmm. see, as I, as you know, some of the designers are just growing, and we, our job is to to promote them. So I don't find it really viable for us to say oh, the theme is this, and you have to create this. Because then we leave them, we, we leave some people out. Mm -hmm. So we leave it open. Yeah. So you've got uh, obviously the Chigali Fashion Week is expanding. You were in Kampala. When were you in Kampala? Uh, tw when we launched. Yeah, we yeah. launched in uh, 2014. 2014. Yeah. Okay, so now you've you've been to you've, it started from Chigali. Yes. And then you've been then to all these places. Then we moved to Bujumbura, from Bujumbura to Kampala, from Kampala we partnered with uh, Ethiopia. Then last year we produced uh, Mercedes Benz Fashion Week in Ghana, mm -hmm. Accra. Mm -hmm. So we just go around the different countries in Africa to inspire and promote and create. Okay. Um, one other thing is um, your how how do you uh, collect your funding for all this? Very good question. Uh, through uh, well wishes, but mainly it's companies. Um, we we have different companies in Rwanda. Uh, corporate companies do sponsor. Uh, in Japan, right now we are working on sponsorship. We have some electronic companies, and we have some car company, which I, I don't want to mention yet until we get the confirmation. But we have some car vehicle. Uh, motor companies, we have electronics, we have garments, clothes company, and we have endorsement. We have endorsement which we already got through from South African Embassy in Japan, Kenyan Embassy in Japan, uh, Malawi Embassy in Japan, Djibouti in Japan, the Africa, Japan African community. There are more than, uh, I think they said about 150. They've endorsed us. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we've, we've had a very good reception in Japan, and, uh, and we were planning to have uh, a crowdfunding. Uh, I think we'll be setting up maybe this, this month because now we have all the endorsements. And we have our, the blessing from the uh, Rwanda, from the Ministry of uh, Culture and Sports. Yeah. How, if a designer out there is looking is going, you know what, I would love to be part of Chigali Fashion Week. I would love to come and showcase. How can they do it? How can they get in touch? Um, no, uh, the, the, the easiest way is to go on our Facebook page and just write some message there because someone will catch up from there because there's always someone checking and uh, you put your, leave your number and your contacts and we'll get in touch with you. See, a design, so the design you're looking for, are they, are they mainly of African origin? No, uh, we work with designers from, from all over the world, different, different designers because the only way for us to develop is to work with designers, whether black, white, Asians, it doesn't matter, but... We, the focus on that is to support and promote African creativity, but they have to learn from others. So, so you're working with everybody. We work with everybody. Wouldn't it be more beneficial if you stuck with the African designers to promote them to the international market? Um, no. Um, basically, when we have a show in, uh, in Kigali, we, we, we have international and locals. 
Africans and internationally, because that's the only way we can develop the African industry. But coming to Europe and going to these countries like Japan, we only work with Africans. Yeah. I think that makes sense, because you cannot bring Europeans to Japan when you go, or, or Japanese to Europe, because already they know everything, but we bring Africans to give the opportunity to meet other designers from inter internationally. But for, for Rwanda, or for Africa in particular, we need to get international designers there, because they're the only, because we have workshops. They have to talk to designers and, and speak and talk, talk about the experience and all that. It's very, very important. And have and, uh, some training as well. Okay, um, John, thanks so much for speaking to us. We're very, very grateful on PowerChat TV. Um, the very last word, um, what do people expect again? Again, what do they expect? I know you've got the, w w let's just go off to what, w what do they expect on the, the actual Chigali Fashion Week? I mean, you've got people are traveling. Well, I'm talking about now the, the uh, what I'd call your audience. Right. Um, what do they expect? Well, the program is going to be uh, the arrival, of course, of the guests and uh, in the country. And uh, we have some. We work with the tour companies that take them. They take them around the country to show them. We have the tourist attraction, and uh, then on the, the first day before the show, we have the cocktail reception, which is uh, already confirmed. Actually, I got the confirmation today by Mill Collins. That's the, the hotel where we had the, the you know the, 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 the what's it called. Hotel Rwanda, you saw this, this the film, the hotel where they had the Hotel Rwanda thing, they've offered us to the cocktail reception. So we, I've just got the information today actually. And uh, so we have the cocktail reception and uh, the network and get, we get to know each other. And uh, designers will showcase some few things and here and there. Then we have some pre-show of the upcoming designers. So you guys who are coming from abroad, you can meet those designers who are starting, you inspire them. Then we have the big show which will take place, and uh, then the after party. So oh, yeah, so it's going to be it's going to be really you know, sharp, you know. <laughs> you know like, it's going to be a week of fun, having having a great time, yes, international right. networking. That's right. All designers out there, be in Uganda, be anywhere in the world, you are welcome to come to the Chigali Fashion Week. And it's, and if you want to get no more information, you go to the uh, Facebook page mm -hmm. and uh, our, our Twitter. The, all the information will be there from next month. So that's, I think that's, that's easy. Go to the Facebook page, Kigali, of, official Kigali Fashion Week page. There you go. We'll put it up, official Kigali Fashion Week page. So yeah. people out there, please come out. Let's support this. Africans in Uganda, in Rwanda, in Burundi, in Tanzania, in Ethiopia. East Africans, come out and support. We're going to be there. John is going to be there. There's going to be lots of artists. There's going to be... I don't know, famous people. I don't know who's coming, but there will be someone there to keep you entertained. My Do not miss. Will be there too. <laughs> <laughs> this this environment where we're at right now, we've just been made some fresh that's juice. Right. This stuff, yeah, all, it's right. all fresh. It's, it's all juice. it's all homemade. It's not stuff you buy from Sainsbury's or and guess what? some or we know market somewhere. And yeah. It's organic too. It's. Mm, it's almost organic. That, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought, actually. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, John, thanks a lot for uh, speaking to Parchat TV, and we shall see you in June. Thank you very much, uh, bro. Ronnie, um, it's a pleasure always, and I'll be very happy to see you in uh, June for the big show. Let's have a party. Peace and love.